chapters. Okay, yep, okay. Isaiah chapter 8. We'll go to the book of Ruth. Ruth, the eighth book of the Bible. Isaiah chapter 8. And it's talking about an invasion upon God's people. See, some think, well, I'm a Christian. Nothing's going to happen to me. If nothing happens to the Christian, God will have to apologize to Israel, and God will have to apologize to Judah. And he's not going to because the judgment and evil upon Israel and Judah is for their sins. And to think that a Christian is, is not Bible doctrine. Moreover, the Lord said, God speaking to Isaiah, unto me, unto Isaiah. Take thee a great roll, and that's what they wrote on. Rolls, instead of books, with big rolls. And write in it with a man's pen. See? You see, man is the pen, the ink is the Holy Spirit. Concerning Mahara Shalah Hash Benaz. That name shows up in verse 3. That is the longest word and name in the Bible. And I took unto me a faithful witness, two of them, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. So Isaiah is doing what the law prescribes. Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of Jerobkiah. And I went unto the prophetess, his wife. Isaiah is a prophet, and Isaiah's wife is a prophetess. Ooh, what are you going to do with that one? Uh, Philip had daughters that were, um, I forget what, but they were. You have Deborah was a prophetess. You have Miriam prophesying with the music. And she conceived and bare a son. Now it's interesting that in this passage here, you think, well, you read your bio, and she conceived and bare a son. You see that comma, conceived and then bare a son? That comma is nine months. She didn't conceive, then boom, out came a baby. So we got to realize when you're looking at commas, periods, semicolons, colons, that it could be a process of time here, nine months. And we're going to come across when we get to verse 14, we got the first advent. And then we got the word and, then we got the second advent. <laughs> and a period, a comma, a semicolon, a colon, any Grammar marking can take you from a verse to a then later period of time or even past period of time. That comma is nine months. And that's very important, not, not just for the fact for Isaiah's son, but other periods, other commas. And bear the son. Then said the Lord unto me, call his name Maher Shedliah Hashbedat. Now he was pre-named before his birth, 8-1. Isaac was pre-named. Jesus was pre-named. John the Baptist was pre-named. I think Ishmael may have been pre-named. There are children in the Bible, they are given their names by God, and this is one of them. And after his birth, I, uh, God says, I said, now remember the name. For before the child, that big long name, shall have knowledge to cry, my father and my mother. So, before he can say, not just mama, dad, dad, my father, my mother. 
Now the name Maher Shahash this means hasty, hasty to the spoil. You spoil people after a war is over. The winning team goes in and grabs the loot from the losers. And God tells Isaiah, this child, before he can say, that's my mother, that's my father. Well, also let's go back real quick, chapter 7, about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, 716, for before the child shall know to refuse evil and to choose good, the land thou abhorrest shall be forsaken both her kings. So some of these children that are born, they are born for prophecy. The riches of Damascus and the spoils of Samaria, that's Israel, the capital of Israel, shall be taken away before the king of Assyria. Assyria is coming into Damascus and he's coming into to Israel and he's going to take spoil. It means he's going to have a victory. The king of Syria is going to have a victory over God's people. Damascus, Paul is on the road to Damascus. And the Lord spake also unto me, Isaiah saying, For as much as this people refuses the waters of Shiloh that go softly, and rejoice in reason in Ramaniah's son. So Israel has put their trust away from God. Chapter 7, verse 1. Chapter 7, verse 1. Uh, Pekah, the son of Ramaniah, the king of Israel. And then um, verse 2, it says, The house of David, Syria is conferred with Ephraim, Israel. His heart is moved, his heart of his people. So they have taken their trust off of God, and they're putting their trust in man. Does history repeat itself? He says, Stalin, you're not going to say what you want. Yeah, I'm going to say it because it's true. That's happening in 2020. There are children of God putting their faith and trust in Donald Trump and the poop with God. And Pfizer's in their vaccine for COVID-19, things are going to get greater and best with Donald Trump and Pfizer and the, and the vaccine shot. I, I've heard I heard Baptists say that. That if COVID-19, I believe COVID-19 is a judgment of God for people to get right and repent. I believe that. And the Baptists, never mind the Catholics, never mind the Presbyterians, never mind the atheists, never mind the agnostics. The Baptists are out there. Well, our heroes, Donald Trump, and our heroes, Pfizer, and our heroes, the vaccine. Well, that's what Israel and Judas right now. Our heroes in Israel. Our heroes in nations. And because their trust is in man and not God, God, okay, fine, I'll bring an army in. 2021 is going to be worse. It's already been worse. There's a strand of COVID-19. The United Kingdom, I read today, is in a complete shutdown today, right now, because of a new strain. If you're going to put your reliance on Donald Trump, and Pfizer's and a vaccine and what God is trying to wake up people to repent to him and his son Jesus Christ, it ain't going to get better. You say, well, stop it. This is what's going on in Israel right now. This is what's going on in Judah right now. We're going to see it in Jeremiah, and this is current events in 2021. And it was in 2020.
and the waters are people. You find that in Revelation. Now, verse 7, Now therefore behold the Lord, bringeth upon them the waters of the river, the enemy, That's the enemy. When you read about that waters, about Mystery Babylon, she says with many waters, uh, something like that. And then the angel, I believe, tells John that that many waters are the people's nations, tongues, and it's all the way back here in, I in Isaiah chapter 8. Strong and many, even the king of Assyria, that's who God's going to bring. And all his glory, he shall come up over his channels and go over all his bank. Here comes the flood. Now, not the flood in Noah's time. Here comes the flood of an army. And your kings, your rulers, the people you defend, the people you love, they ain't gonna, they're not going to be able to do anything to help you. Nothing at all. And sorry, I, I'm not going to give 2021. I'm not going to, I don't know when God, there's going to be coming a day, guys. All right, fine. You want to put your trust in that? You want to put your trust in them? You want to put your trust in nouns, person, place, or things, and not me and Jesus Christ? Oh, I'm, 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 I'm going to let the floodgates go. I'm going to break the dam down, and then I'm going to let them come, whatever and whoever it is, and you're not going to be able to get out of it. Whole Christians who are putting their faith and trust in the world. He shall pass through Judah, not just it, Judah. He shall overflow and go over flood. The invasion of Assyria is likened to a flood. He shall reach even to the neck. Up to your, he's in it up to your neck, is the expression. And the stretching out of his wings. If you're to bring this up to current, and Syria is a type of the Antichrist. If you were to bring it up to current events, his wings, if it's a future event too, if it's a, how about airplanes? Five twenty-seven. None shall be weary, none shall stumble among them. None shall slumber, no sleep, neither shall the girdle of the loins be loose, nor the latch of his shoes be broken. This invasion has already been talked about. It is the results of God, the consequences of God, because the people won't get right with God. Friend, that's, this happened. I read today in Florida, I, I, I'm, I'm from Connecticut. I've lived in Florida since 2011. I read today that the governor of Florida is going to allow places of worship to be able to wow. If that's not a marriage of the world and the church. You want your vaccine? You can go to your place of work. This, this is not happening yet, but this is a proposition. If, if you want the vaccine, you can go to your house of worship and you'll be able to get your vaccine. The world's in the church. And the signs are outside there. All are welcome. Your church house ain't the temple of God, ain't the house of God. I'm telling you that right now. I don't care what you say. So, and shall fill the breath of thy land, the land of Israel, O Emmanuel. O Emmanuel. Chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. 
Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. God with us. Look at that sarcasm. God with you? God, God ain't going to be with you when, when the enemy comes. You know, that's almost America right there. You say, what are you talking about? God bless America. <laughs> oh, watch this. In God we trust. <laughs> God is in the midst of our congregation. <laughs> People don't like what I preach. I told my daughter today. I said, all the stuff I post, all the things I say. Hey, if you if you if you're walking right with God, you're studying it, they'll say, Hey man, glory to God, I like that. I gotta share that. that yeah. The ones that get upset, the ones that get angry, the ones I kicked. You know, if you take salt and rub it on my hand, oh, that's okay. But if I got a cut on my hand and you put that, ah, oh, that hurts. The salt got in. The salt got in. You are the salt of the earth. And it's too bad when we are the salt of the earth and many Christians, ah, it burns. Shut them up. I'm offended. Oh, Emmanuel, God with you. Wait, you see what God's going to do. And between this Emmanuel and the Emmanuel being born, pretty soon all the kings are going to be gone. I just read my daily read in Jeremiah. I read today, oh, earth, earth, earth. Write this man childhood. There shall not be a man of his seed. That's it. And Lord willing, we'll come to that in Jeremiah. There'll be no more kings. Why you need a virgin birth? Imagine a man say, "Well, he he has more stock in in, in the death, burial, and resurrection, but not the not the birth of Jesus." Uh, you you're, you're a liar. Did I skip chapter seven, verse fourteen? That's chapter five. Did I skip chapter seven, verse fourteen? I can bring you to a church where they skip Jeremiah chapter 10. <clears throat> oh, Emmanuel. Associate. That's the only place that word shows up. Yourselves. Oh, ye people. Who's oh, ye people? God's people. Judah. And you shall be broken in pieces. That don't sound good. And so, you know, God will like Jeremiah will go to the to the potter's house and he'll find a, a vessel. And it's like that vessel has been hardened. That vessel has been set. And then God takes that vessel, <laughs> cracks it on the floor in pieces. It'd be like if, if, like into Israel, an egg. God takes that egg. <laughs> broken in pieces. I mean, the expression is they've gone to pieces. It comes out of a King James Bible, my friend. And give ear. You better listen. All ye of far countries. So this is not just Israel. This is far countries. And yourselves. Ye shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourself. Ye shall be broken in pieces. Go ahead. Put on your strength. Put your clothes on. You're going to be broken in pieces. Put your armor on. You're going to be broken in pieces. Take counsel together. What should I do? What should I do? What should I do? And it shall come to naught. <laughs> Sarcasm. Go ahead, meet together. Get the United Nations together. Go ahead, sit down at a table of peace talks. And it, nothing's going to come of it. You know, these peace treaties uh, that, uh, you know, Israel signing peace treaties with all these people. What do you think, Sally? I think of one of two things. Ooh, what is it? It is the road to the Antichrist. Uh, Revelation 5 or 6. That white, that white, that man, the white horse comes in with, with a bow and no arrows. Yay! All right. 
Or it's just one of how many peace trees has been peace trees, have been broken peace trees, peace trees that failed peace trees, peace trees that never brought peace. I believe we're going to read it. I think it's Isaiah or Ezekiel. There is no peace, saith the Lord, to the wicked. Meet all you want. Rag all you want. No peel priest pride. It ain't going to last long. United Nations, the peace ambassadors. And how many wars have been since the United Nations? I mean, if they're a peaceful, why do they have soldiers? <laughs> So, speak the word. It's not the word of God. <laughs> and it shall not stand. For God is with us. That's sarcasm. <laughs> in the name of God, in God we trust. One nation under God. <laughs> God's up to, yeah, right. Do whatever you want. I ain't with it. You read what he read, what he says about the Lazarusian church age. You make me sick. You are what you are, what you say, and God says what you really are. You're completely opposite. And God is this house of worship. I am there. This is the house of God. At the end of chapter three in Revelation, where is Jesus standing? Ask yourself. I'll let you go look it up, Revelation chapter 3. At the close of chapter 3, where is Jesus standing if you got the house of God? And there are many churches all over the world, not just America, all over the world. God is here. We're the church. Uh, uh, let me give you a clue where God is in your assembly if you got a lot of the same church age. That's where God is. And in 2 uh, Corinthians is 11 or 15, Paul says that inside many of the churches, there is Satan and his ministers preaching. God's not in Judah right now. They're sinned against God. God is not in many of the church. Many, I didn't say all, many of the church, because God is not there. The devil is. You can't have God when you got paganism. That don't work. What was it? The Lord or Belial. What's that, Paul writes? You can't have no concord with, with God or the Belial. And yet the Laodicean church is trying to put it all together and marry the two together. And I'm telling you, I, I have welded. I've done welding many times. I've worked with welding. And when the church is trying to get the world and God together, it's like taking a welding with, with steel and mayonnaise. You ain't going to do nothing. But we're great. We're wonderful. How? Yeah, that's what Revelation chapter 3. That's what Israel. We're great. We're, we're in Jehovah's might. And God's like, uh-uh, no, you're not. Lord willing, wait till we get to Jeremiah. They're going to call upon the queen of heaven. Take counsel together. It shall not come to naught. Speak the word and it shall not stand. For God is with us. <laughs> and God we trust. One nation under God. For the Lord said, or spoke, can't read with my, my mark and my word. Thus to me, this is what God said to me, Isaiah, with a strong hand with his, and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, God is with us. Isaiah, yes, Lord, don't walk their way. But they said, they're with you, God. They, they say, in God we trust. They say, one nation under God. 
<laughs> Isaiah, don't walk with him. You got that? Say ye not. Don't say this. A confederacy. A lion. To all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear. <laughs> Neither fear ye their fear. They're afraid. And Isaiah don't fear their fear. Wow. You know what I'm telling you? Don't fear their fear. Nor be afraid. <laughs> Boy, God is so comical. You know what I mean? <laughs> Look at them words that God is saying. The fear. The fear. But well, we got a confederacy. We're doing great. We're in God. Isaiah, yeah. Don't fear their fear. And neither you be afraid. Sanctify, set apart the Lord of hosts himself. He's talking to Isaiah. And let him be your fear. And let him be your dread. Not the nations. Not people. Trust in God and not in the military or foreign help. Friend, that is all. That is Israel today. Israel, back off a little bit and let the PLO get a little stance in there and we'll take care of you. you know, Israel, back off a little bit. Let Jordan have a little bit. And, and Israel does it and Israel does it and Israel does it. Right now, the fear and dread of the world is COVID-19. And what is the reaction to COVID-19? Donald Trump and Pfizer to the rescue. And God's up in heaven. What about my son? You're supposed to repent. What about proper Bible teaching? Well, you know, uh, uh, people are offended of your preaching. But it's true. It wouldn't be offensive if I didn't catch. Sanctify, set apart the Lord of hosts himself. And let him be your fear. And let him be your dread. Fear the Lord to begin the wisdom. And he shall be for a sanctuary. A place of a dwelling. A place of, I'll take care of you. But, all right, first advent, first advent, try and look at marking my Bible. Oh, forgive me. But for a stone of trembling, Jesus Christ, first advent, and for a rock of offense, second advent. To both the houses of Israel, house both north and south. Israel was supposed to tremble at Jesus Christ's first coming. He said they mocked. They turned them over to Roman government. They had no respect to him. And when he comes back, a rock of fence for a gin that is not a drink, that is a trap. And for a snare, that's a trap, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many, many among them shall stumble. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. And fall, and be broken, and be snared, and be taken. That's that rock that Daniel speaks about. The rock that was cut without hand dis destroys. The, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cheese and the, and the, and the rock of events, a stumbling block. Bind up the testimony. Put a rope. Seal it up. I believe Jeremiah is told to bind it up. 
and Cassidy and Euphrates. It's tied up. Sealing the law among my disciples. This is the only Old Testament reference to the word disciples. Nowhere else in the Old Testament is that word disciple. God is going to put blindness and deafness in, of the law and the testimony to the people. He's going to close their eyes and he's going to close their ears. And I will wait upon the Lord, Isaiah speaking, that hideth his face from the house of Jacob and will look for him. Isaiah, I'm going to seek God, but God has closed his eyes to his people. And many people in the land to see in church say, oh, God is with us. God is great. The house of God. And very few Christians are out there seeking God, fearing God. Amongst the congregation, guys, like, I don't have anything to do with them. I'm standing outside. And they're inside so wonderful, so great, so that's exactly what Revelation chapter 3 is. And that's what Isaiah is saying. What the attitude of Judah is, God is with us. Then why is the enemy coming? In the house of God, why is the enemy inside the building? Isaiah, Jeremiah is history, and yet it's prophecy, and yet it's history repeats itself. Isaiah, one man against the whole nation says, I'm going to do right. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me, Isaiah. It's Isaiah and his sons. So Isaiah has other children. Children, plural. Whom the Lord has given are for signs. The, the son that we that we read about today, Mahar Hahil Hashabith. That that man's a sign. He says, "Listen, before that man can say hi, Mama, hi, Daddy, there's an invasion coming. When Emmanuel is born, there'll be no kings in the land." Sarah, Abraham, when Isaac's born, you laughed at me. This is Isaiah speaking. And wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. What's the wonders? The judgments that are coming. And they'll continue in the book of Jeremiah. And when they shall say unto you. Isaiah. Or Isaiah writing. But this is what they say. Seek unto them that have familiar spirits. A psychic. Open up the, open up the newspaper and see what your horoscope says. I wonder how many Christians do that. I wonder how many Christians are involved in tarot cards and Ouija boards, tea leaves. I wonder how many people in the pulpit are involved in this stuff today. Never mind the congregation. And unto wizards. This is what the Jews are saying. I remember when when the Harry Potter books came up. I remember on my Facebook, I had Christian friends and all that. And, I, and, and they have a list of, of people, all the people on Facebook, if they do it, the books and movies and stuff they're like. And you won't believe how many Christian friends I had have. <laughs> and one of their favorite books was Harry Potter. And one of their favorite movies was Harry Potter. 
And I'm telling you, some of those children were the children of the pastors. Children and pastors don't want to be involved in familiar spirits, wizardry, and all that. The Bible says it's wrong. The Bible says if you can't teach your child at home, you don't belong in that position. Wizards that peep. That's the only place that word shows up. And that mutter. I said, my Bible so Mark, I can't. Mutter, that's the only place that word shows up. Shows up. Should not a people seek unto their God, the, 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 the children of God? Israel, right now, where we are. And the children of God, their God, is going to God, the devil, small g. Friend, that's what's happening in the church today. The church is involved of the devil. And where's Jesus? Revelation chapter 3. I'll leave you to go check that out. And you know, you know, the, you know who they're going to get upset for me with this message? The ones that I am preaching against. And I have no preacher, I have no pastor, and I have no church in mind. And you that gets upset, God stepped on your toes, not me. Because there'll be many people for your offense. Be, wow, that was a good message. He's right. For the living to the dead. What is dead? The wizards, familiar spirits. What is living? God. And for the Christian, the living would be gold, silver, and precious stones. The dead would be wood, hay, or stubble. There are many Christians, I'm sorry to say, and there are many pastors, I'm sorry to say, that when we get to the judgment seat of Christ, I'm going to get rewards that they're not going to get. Because they're involved in the world. And they accuse me of being wrong. To the law, that's not us. And to the testimony, that's not us. That was to be sealed and binded up, verse 16. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. The light's gone out. What did Jesus tell one of the seven churches? Unless you repent, or I'll take your candlestick away. And the last of seeing church age, there are plenty of churches where the candlestick has just been removed. And, and I've had Christians come up to me, oh, I let my light shine. Do you witness the gospel of Jesus? Well, no, I let my light shine. Do you tell people, no, I let my light shine? No, you're telling me the light bulb's out. The switch is off. The battery cables have been removed. And I bet you couldn't even find what book you're quoting from. Listen, you learn a lot when, when you're in a public ministry. And they shall and and they shall pass through it heartily. Be stead. Man, sometimes I marked some of my Bible. And I wish I never did. And hungry. You know, there are church members who love the Lord are sitting in churches in, throughout the world today, and they're starving to death. Because when they go to church, they're trying to do right, they're trying to serve the Lord, and they're getting goat food. They're not getting sheep food. Sheep is the Christian. Goat is the world. Jesus Christ comes, he'll separate the sheep from the goat. The goats go to hell, the sheep go in the millennium. And they're starving. But they know about Christmas and Easter.
And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their God and look upward. It's all about self. It's the government that God is in trouble. It's God that God is in trouble. No, you've been fooling around with witchcraft. You've been fooling around with the devil. I didn't know. And God will say, study to show thyself a fruit unto God, a workman that he is not to be shamed, rightly divine the, the word. Well, I didn't know our church was wrong. Study to show thyself a proof unto God, a work with his knee is not to be shamed, rightly divine the word. I didn't know I was being deceived. Study to show thyself to prove unto God, a work with his knee is not to be shamed, rightly divine the word of truth. For every I did it or I don't know, study to show thyself a proof unto God, a work with his knee is not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. And they shall look unto the earth and behold trouble. That's Jacob's trouble. And darkness. That's Jacob's trouble. Dimness of anguish. That's Jacob's trouble. And they shall be driven to darkness, death, and hell. But we're God's people. And Jesus said, you may be the children of Abraham, but unless you put your faith and trust in me and the Father, you're lost. But we're the children of Abraham. Yeah, they ain't going to get you nowhere. I went to this church. They ain't going to get you nowhere. My mom, they ain't going to get you nowhere. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved today. We are as in the days of Isaiah and Jeremiah. The church age. And we are in the days of Isaiah and Jeremiah because Isaiah and Jeremiah are not, they're not studied. They've been perverted. 